Welcome back to the second part here where we're going to cover variables and operators in the Java programming language. We'll start with very, very simple variables. Uh, variables, all, all variables are going to be statically typed, meaning uh, that you have to declare them before you use them and that they're going to be in the scope in which you declare them. In other words, if you declare them inside of a method, they're local to that method and they only exist inside that method. Uh, if you declare them inside of a loop block, then they only exist inside that loop block. And after that loop block, then they no longer exist. They're out of scope. There are eight built-in primitive types. Uh, and for that, I'm simply going to go ahead and go to the uh, Oracle's documentation here. Uh, those, eight uh, those eight variable types that are built into the programming language, we call them primitive because they are part of the language specification itself. The Java virtual machine, the Java compiler, they all know what they are. Uh, they're not user-defined types, which are classes that we'll get into later. There's byte, short, int, and long. All four of those are going to be integers. All of them are also going to be, as the documentation shows here, uh, they're all going to be signed. So it has a, max, a minimum value of negative 128 and a maximum value of 127 inclusive on both ends. Uh, short is a two byte, 16 bit uh, integer. Uh, integer is the standard four byte or 32 bit twos complement integer. And so it is able to express up to about 2.47 billion and then negative 2.47 billion. Uh, you also have a long, which is an 8-byte or a 64-bit uh, integer. Right? Those are the four uh, integer. Um, those are the four integral types in Java. You also have two floating types, uh, float and double. Float is only going to be a 32-bit uh, IEEE 754 floating point number. Uh, it only. Uh, the, the, don't worry about the details of that. Again, uh, it's standard. It only has about eight digits of precision. Uh, a double is a 64-bit uh, IEEE 754 floating point number. Uh, it's going to have 64 bits, and so therefore it's going to have a lot more precision, which translates to about 16 to 17 decimal uh, digits of accuracy. Generally, I only use the double unless there's an absolutely good reason to use float, like you're doing a game engine or something like that. You also have Boolean and char. A Boolean is simply just a true or false value. Uh, in fact, you can only assign true and false to it. Uh, and a character is a 16-bit Unicode character. So it's, uh, it supports ASCII, the, 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 the regular ASCII character set, but it also is able to support Unicode. So CJK fonts, uh, which is uh, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Korean fonts, inter Cyrillic, uh, all of those international um, uh, fonts in other languages, as well as uh, emojis and things like that. Uh, but don't use those in your code. Right. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump in to the demo uh, and give you a quick demonstration here. Again, Java is statically typed, so you have to declare a variable before you use it. I'll just go ahead and keep my attention to the three basic types uh, that we'll, we'll probably use most. That is int, double, and char. And that's how you can declare an integer value. You can declare a double value and assign it a double value as well, and a character. In Java, single characters are denoted with single quotes. So there is no implicit typecasting. If I tried to do something like this, it's going to complain. Uh, the reason is, uh, is that pi uh, is a 3.14. If I tried to assign that value to an integer, there'd be a loss of precision. Uh, generally, what happens is that you have truncation. In other words, the, uh, the floating point part gets chopped off and thrown away. You'd end up getting a value of 3. Right? So in some, lang some languages allow you to do that with implicit typecasting, meaning that Okay, I'll go. Uh, the compiler or the system or whatever is going to go ahead and do that truncation automatically for you and not really complain about it. Java is different in that it is going to complain about it and say, I'm not going to allow you to do this implicitly. If you really want to do this, you're going to have to make that decision and you're going to have to communicate that to me. It does allow you to do explicit typecasting. For example, I can force pi to become an integer by doing an explicit typecast and now it's compatible with the variable a. Of course, we're going to have truncation here. So if I wanted to print this out, 
I'm only going to get three. The floating point value was chopped off and thrown away. That's not the same thing as rounding. If this had been 3.94, it would not give me four. It would still give me three because truncation is chopping it off entirely. So the Java does have some naming rules. They're pretty standard. Uh, they can contain, uh, 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 variable names can contain letters, uh, digits, uh, underscores, and dollar signs, although both of those you should probably avoid. Uh, they just can't begin with a number. There's no white space, etc. But the convention that you should stick to is lower camel casing. So for example, if I wanted to do a number of students, Number of students is lower camel case. That is, it's multiple words, right? Number of students. The first word is all lowercase. Each subsequent word, the first letter is uppercase, but all subsequent letters after that are going to be lowercase. Right? Uh, these are all just one word, uh, so we didn't uh, have any camel casing there, but it, it follows the same convention. And of course, you should avoid generic variable names like this. Uh, or placeholder names like foo or bar, etc. Name a variable what it represents. We'll talk about strings in more detail later on, but I do want to show you that you can easily use uh, a convenient string along with concatenation using the, pl the plus sign. So string S, and I can set it equal to, using double quotes here for a string literal, I can set it equal to that value. When I print it out, it's whatever is, is stored into that. Uh, you can also use string concatenation. And now S will have the value hello world with an exclamation point after it. Right. I'm reassigning the value here. Again, we'll look at it later on. The strings are immutable, meaning that you're not actually changing the original string. Uh, the original string is still there, uh, eligible now for garbage collection, uh, but you've created a new string, which is the concatenation of the old string and then this new string literal with a space, world, and exclamation point. Right. Uh, but you can declare and use strings very, very conveniently here. So once you have variables, you'll want to do things with them. And to do things with variables, you need to have operators that operate on those variables. You have these standard arithmetic operators. So let me go ahead and let me go ahead and create a few variables here to work with. You have addition. You have subtraction, multiplication, and division. You've got to be careful here though. A divided by B, what is that? 10 divided by 20, you should think that that's going to be 0.5, right? But again, this is integer division, right? And there's no, exp there's no implicit typecasting. So 10 divided by two, that's 0.5, but the result is going to be an integer because an integer divided by an integer is going to be an integer. Just like an integer plus an integer has to be an integer, the difference and the multiplication of two integers has to be an integer. Uh, the division of two integers has to be an integer. So what is 0.5 as an integer? Well, it's just truncated and you get zero. So to do uh, to actually get the correct answer here, what you need to do is you need to do an explicit uh, an explicit typecast on at least one of them, and you need to change the result to a compatible type that can hold a, a fractional value, a floating point value. And now we get 0.5. You also have an integer division. This should be read as a mod b. In other words, if we took a and divided by and divided it by b, we would get a value, but then we would also have a remainder. This gives you the remainder, right? So I'm not going to use variables here to demonstrate this. I'll just go ahead and use a couple of examples. Uh, what if I've got uh, what if I've got uh, let's say 10 mod 7, right? In other words, what's the value 
uh, what's the remainder uh, when you take 10 divided by 7? Well, 7 goes into 10 once with a remainder of 3. So if we printed this out, we would get the remainder instead of the uh, quotient or whatever it's called. Right? If you want to change this around, well, what's 6 divided by 7? Well, 7 doesn't go into 6 at all, uh, so it, the, re the remainder is the entire thing, 6. A really nice uh, application of this is that you can determine whether or not a number is even or odd. If the remainder, if you divide it by two and it's even, then you should get a remainder of zero. A, remember, is 10, so it's even, and we get a remainder of zero. But if A were 11 odd, well, two would go into 11 five times with a remainder of one. You also have logical operators and inequality operators. Uh, we'll talk about this in more detail when we get on to uh, conditionals so that we can actually use them. Uh, but the exclamation point is not. The double ampersand is and, the logical and. Uh, the two Sheffer strokes or vertical lines or pipes, whatever you want to call them, uh, those are uh, disjunction. That's a uh, logical or. You also have strictly less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, equals, equals, and not equals. Uh, those should only ever be used for numerical values to determine is the value stored in A equal to 10. It should never be used for strings. And I'm going to go back and demonstrate why you would not want to do this. So let me go ahead and create two strings with the same values. Now this is a little bit of a preview of what we're going to do next, which are conditionals, but that's okay. Uh, I'm, I've got two strings here, S and T, with the same contents, and I'm asking, are they the same string? If they're equal to each other, then it outputs these strings are the same. If they're diff uh, Otherwise, if they're not equal to each other, then they print out that they're different. Well, they're the same string, right? So it should be printing out the strings are the same. And actually, in this case, it is actually going to print out that the strings are the same. But that's only because there's some funkiness going on under the hood in the Java virtual machine. Uh, the compiler is seeing, hey, this is the same string, this is the same string. There's no reason for me to create two strings that are immutable that cannot be changed with the same content, and so it doesn't. It actually creates one string and makes both S and T reference it. That's why they're the same. Right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to force the Java virtual machine to create two distinct string objects. And now when I use this, it says that they're different, even though the contents are the same. If I were to print these out, for example, it's gonna print out the exact same thing. Hello and hello. But it's saying that they're different. And the reason for that is when you've got objects here, which are strings or objects, uh, if you've got anything other than a numerical value, then it, this doesn't mean numerical equality. What it's doing is it's asking, are these the same objects stored in memory? Right? Is this memory address represented by S, is it the same thing as the memory address represented by T? Are they stored at the same memory location in the Java virtual machine? Now, in the first example, when it said that they were, this, uh, uh, that they were the same, well, that was because the Java virtual machine was created only one string, and so it was the same thing in memory. But by forcing it to create an entirely different string somewhere else in memory, then we get that they are different. Right? So the takeaway from this is simply do not use equality or inequality with respect to anything other than a number. Right? Now one last thing before we move on to conditionals and loops. This entire time I've been printing stuff out to the standard output or translation the console down here using system.out. Uh, system is actually a class, and in that we've got a variable called out, which represents the standard output. Uh, you also have in, which represents the standard input. Uh, and then it has several methods. It has a println method, which means that anything that you put inside of these parentheses is just going to print that out. The ln means that it's going to automatically insert an endline character for you. If you don't want it to insert that inline character for you, then you can simply use print.
and now it won't go to the next line, right? Uh, you can insert that endline character manually if you really want to, right? or you could insert two of them, right? This is a string containing the endline character. This is a character containing the endline character. You can concatenate them all together all you want. You can even concatenate values. For example, if I had that A value still, right? you could concatenate the value of, of A, and you would get hello, first end line here, second end line here, 10, and then no end line character at the end, and then it goes and prints T. Uh, there are several other print methods. I'm going to go ahead and show you another way of doing this. So if you're familiar with printf, printf is a staple of most programming languages. Most programming languages will have an implementation of printf. It simply stands for print formatted. And what you can do is you can give it a format. If I want to print a string, I can use percent %s. If I, wanted to pr uh, if I wanted to print a double, the place these are called placeholders, I can go with placeholder %d. If I wanted to print a floating point number, I can go with percent %f. And then, of course, I can insert my own endline character if I really want to here. I'll go ahead and print out the string s, the integer a, and the floating point number pi here. And when I do that, I get the format here, hello, comma, space. Then it printed, it printed the contents of that string, it printed the contents of that integer, and it printed the contents of that floating point number. But you'll notice here that it went out to six decimal places of accuracy. That's the standard, that, that's the default way of doing stuff. You can change this by giving it modifiers. For example, you can say, I only want two digits of accuracy. So decimal place, two digits of accuracy. Now it will only print out 3.14. If I wanted more digits of accuracy, if I wanted 20 digits of accuracy, then of course it would go out for 20 digits here. You can go ahead and count those up yourself if you really want to. You can also control the formatting on the left side. So for example, let me go ahead and get rid of these two and only print out the pi value here. What I want to do, and I'll go ahead and go out to six decimal places of accuracy. Uh, if I want to align columns to the standard output, I can go ahead and put another modifying number over here, say 20. And the interpretation of this is I want to print out a minimum of 20 columns and six decimals of accuracy. This 20 columns includes the decimal point, so 3.14 and then uh, four additional decimal places of accuracy. That's gonna be eight digits. Uh, but if I wanna print out a minimum of 20, then it's going to pad that out with 12 other, uh, with 12 blank spaces to the left. It's aligned to the to the right, meaning that the uh, the padding is going to be out there on the left. If you want to switch that around and align to the left with a padding on the right, you put in a negative value, right? and you can't see them. But I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and put in uh, hello right? at the end so that you can see that it was three point one four and then four zeros, then twelve uh, columns of padding aligned to the left, and then we have our hello at the end here. You can do the same thing with integers and strings if you really want to. You can pad out A to 20, and it's only one zero, so there are going to be 18 uh, blank columns here now. Uh, you can do it with strings. And hello has five characters, so there are going to be 15 padded out to the front. Uh, and of course, you can realign them. and you get it on the uh, left uh, alignment instead. Uh, this is really helpful if you're trying to get nice standard output, uh, like a ledger or something like that. So in the next video, we'll talk about more familiar things with conditionals and loops.